This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can take your logo and place it onto a black cardstock in the appearance that it's been printed with uh, kind of like a, a raised gold ink. And uh, in order to follow along with the tutorial, the logo, if you want to do this with your own logo, you're going to need a .png file with a transparent background and with negative space inside of it like you see here on mine. And it doesn't have to be black like mine is. It could be any color you want, just as long as it has a transparent background like mine does and there's no fill color inside of here. There's negative space. And um, if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, you could use my logo here. I'll have that linked in the description of the video. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is open up this cardstock image. And I'm just going to open that up. I'm going to right click that and go to open with GIMP. I'm going to have this linked in the description of the, um, of the video. But um, it's actually going to be linked as a .zip file because this is actually a template. For, this is actually a PSD template for uh, another logo mockup that's intended for use with Photoshop. But unfortunately, we can't really use this with Photoshop because uh, GIMP doesn't have smart objects like uh, Photoshop does, so I'm going to kind of do like a makeshift creation of my own. So um, go ahead and download that zip file and you should see this image in there. So just pull that image out and delete everything else and open this up with Inkscape. So once we have that opened, we're going to need to open the uh, the gold image. I'll have this linked in the description of you uh, as well. Gold foil, open with GIMP. And there's our gold foil image. And we're going to need our logo, finally. I'm just going to take the logo and click and drag it into the gold foil image. And there it is. And um, we're going to want the logo to, to be the, just as big as the, uh, the image here. So I'm going to grab the scaling tool. I'm going to click on the logo. I'm going to hold control and grab one of these corners and pull it down, pull it up to scale it up because we want this to encompass as much of this area as possible. Because if you look at the image, you'll notice it's kind of like a gradient going on from like darker to lighter to darker. We want to get some of that. We want to get a lot of that, as much of that into the logo as possible. So go ahead and click scale. And there that is. And I'm just going to take the move tool. I'm just going to move this over a little bit so that the black part of the logo is going into that darker area of the gradient just to grab some of that in there. Maybe I'll put this right about there. And I'd say that's pretty good. But what we can do now is right click on the layer and go to alpha to selection and then go ahead and delete that layer and then we could just copy this by going to uh, edit copy and now we can come back over to our, our card, uh, card stock here and go to edit paste as new layer and what we want to do now is I'm going to zoom out by holding control and rolling down on the mouse wheel and I'm going to grab the scale tool and click on the uh, logo and scale that down. Just hold control and grab one of the corners to scale that down. Scale. Put this over here. Let me zoom back in. Hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in. And I just want to rotate this around now so that it's running parallel with the edge of this card right here. So before I do that, I just want to take the opacity of this and bring this down like that. And I'll take the move tool and I'll bring this over here. Then I'll grab the rotate tool which is right here and just click and drag that image. And if you see why it is that I brought the opacity down, when we rotate it, it creates another rendering of it at full opacity. And if, the, if we don't bring the opacity down, it's going to be at full opacity beneath it and we really won't be able to see what we're doing. So that's why I did that. Um, what we're looking at here is the edge of the um, the grid, not the actual graphic, but the grid itself. We want the grid to be the edge of the grid to be running parallel with the edge of this card here, and that's pretty close enough. You could you could eyeball it like that, and once that's set like that, we go ahead and click rotate, and now we can bring the opacity of that back up, and I can move this over here like that. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to change the mode of this from normal to dodge, just to make the color you know pop a little more. And what we want to do now is add a little bit of a shadow beneath it to make it look like it's it's printed on with gold like uh, paint. First thing we're going to do is add a little drop shadow on there. So I'm going to right click that layer and go to alpha to selection, and then we'll go to um, 
filters, uh, light and shadow, drop shadow. And we want to use offset X, pretty much these settings here, 2, 3, 2, black color, 100% opacity, allow resizing, no. And go ahead and click OK. And that should put a little drop shadow. Let me go to um, select none. And if you zoom in, you'll see there's a little bit of a shadow under there, a little bit of a drop shadow, which is good. And I want to take the opacity of that and bring that down to like 74, just to make that a little more natural like that. Actually, you know, you know what? I clicked on the wrong thing. Let me bring that back up. We want to click on the drop shadow layer and bring that down to like 74. That's pretty good. And what we'll do now is we just have to add a little bit of a bevel to this logo here now. Like if you notice what I did here, add a little bit of a bevel. We'll go ahead and click on the, um, the clipboard layer and we'll go to filters, decor, add bevel. And we want to use a four point bevel. Work on copy, keep bump layer. Go ahead and click OK. And it's going to do its thing. And it's going to create another file. Because this is the original file we were working with. It creates another, it opens up a new tab within GIMP to show you. So if you don't like how it came out, if you want to make the bevel like thicker or thinner, you'll just have to X out of this and do it again on this other tab over here. So. Um, that's where it is now. Let me zoom into 100% by pressing 1. It doesn't look that great zoomed into 100%, but when you, when you zoom out a little bit and view it how it's supposed to be viewed, it looks pretty good. It looks, it looks good enough in my opinion. So that's how you can create that using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.